Hello, good day everyone. I am starting this session with Dr. Nima, so I'm just inviting him to join us. There he is. And we're going to be talking about healing attachment trauma. Hello again. I just invited our guest and I'm just waiting for him to join us. So stay with us. This is going to be a super cool session as he's talking to us and taking us through healing. And Rob, yes, I, I, I see you. I'm going to connect with you. I know we talked before. So while he's joining us, um, this session is part of, um, yeah, I know. <laughs> this session is part of our um, summer wellness series that Prompt Health is putting on, and we are meeting with different health experts as they walk us through different topics uh, around all things health and wellness throughout July and August. Um, so you will be seeing us going live um, several times a week. Uh, so stay tuned for, there's going to be a lot of cool events. We've already had um, a lot of uh, practitioners who've had these sessions with us uh, over the past couple of weeks. And there will be many more great speakers. Um, so you can learn more as we update our schedule regularly. And I think Nima received my invitation. Just waiting for him to join. I see some friends, hello. Nice to see you guys here. Um, yeah, there hello. he is. Hello. Hi, nice to see you. Hey, dear. great to meet you. Let me great put on my headphones. You. Let me put on my headphones and let's do this. Yay, finally Yay. we made it. We, we, we made it. Yeah, I'm so, I didn't, you know, this, this wellness series has been so wonderful because I learned about so many, about so many great, great uh, people uh, and I did, my voice is okay. You have my voice okay? I think you got disconnected there. Yes. Yeah, I'm back. Here you are. Okay. Um, so I, first of all, I didn't know you are Persian and you're in Vancouver. So nice to meet you. <laughs> so I think we have some connection issues. Just waiting for him to come back as the connection is not happening but he should should be okay soon hopefully okay i think i'll invite him again sorry guys stay with us i just sent him another request yeah so i am there there he is sorry. okay sorry your connection is not good Or can yeah, you hear I, me? I, yeah. So, are we here? We are here, but the connection is <laughs> not super good. Okay. So, I can see you okay. I can see you okay. Uh, okay, good. Uh, so I was just, yeah, I keep losing you. Uh, I was just saying, um, I'm so glad that I learned about you because um, first of all, I didn't know you are Persian and you also live in Vancouver. So nice to meet you. <laughs> and thanks for accepting my invitation. I can't, learn to, I can't wait to learn from you. It, yeah. <laughs> it, feels, it feels like we're on a little uh, bit of so, a delay. So, you know, I'm just going to turn the floor to... Do it on, is there any way we I can know. do it in, on Zoom or, Zoom or something? I've never done this platform, and I usually like to do Zoom. Um, not usually on Instagram Live. I, I don't know what it is. It's a little bit of a delay, which makes our connection a little um, bit challenging. Yeah. 
Well, I think everybody are expecting us to be live. If we do a Zoom, nobody will have access to it. That's the problem. Um, Got oh, it. Okay. this is better. Let's do the best we can then. Now this yeah, is let's do the best we can then. Okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to turn the floor to you to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about what you do and what made you want to do what you do. Huh. Interesting. Where do, let's see, where do I begin? Hmm. Um, first of all, now I think I'm a little bit closer to my Wi-Fi thing. So I want there to show you. There you go. You That's it. Beautiful. Nice beautiful view. Vancouver. Where are you in and Vancouver? So I'm in, I'm in, I'm in just outside of Chinatown. Okay. Uh, just right around the stadium right there. Yeah. Where are you in Vancouver? I'm in West Vancouver where all the Persians are. Okay, cool. <laughs> Where all the yeah. Persians are over there, my, my twin brother lives in West Vancouver. So, there you go. Um, yeah, I I love Vancouver. Uh, it's a beautiful city. Uh, the more I travel, I get to. Uh, I've I've been blessed to be able to travel, and the more I travel, the more I appreciate Vancouver. Um, who I am, uh, I've at heart, I'm a chiropractor. So, if anybody who's been working in the health field for more than five to 10 years will tell you that the main reason why people are coming to see them in their, for, for, in their practices, doctors, massage therapists, naturopaths, nutritionists, <coughs> there's usually some sort of a physical ailment going on. But what was a very curious thing that I discovered was that there are emotional injuries that we go through mm -hmm. in our lives that are unaddressed from our mm -hmm. upbringing, from childhood. And those injuries, those emotional injuries, usually are relationship-based, relational. So mm -hmm. they're called attachment wounds, right? So you have an attachment with your mother, and our survival is based on our attachments with these caregivers. And so if we have a break in that attachment bond for some reason, because the parent wasn't, you know, our parents aren't perfect. We're not, per I'm, I'm, a, I'm a parent. I know that I'm not a perfect parent. Um, but if we didn't have kind of good enough mm -hmm. attachment, what ends up happening is this injury is very insidious. You don't see it. It's mm -hmm. not visible to the naked eye. You can't see what... Um, unworthiness feels what what you can't see what unworthiness the injury of unworthiness in somebody because it's it's a, it's in the soul but you can kind of see it in their posture you know shame mm -hmm. unworthiness uh not good enoughness because of the stories that our childlike egoic egocentric inner child makes shows up in our body Mm -hmm. I was noticing this in my practice with patients with really poor posture, inability to make eye contact, looking mm -hmm. up. It, I mean, when somebody walks in a room, you can feel the impact of their traumas, even though you might not know what you're looking at. Deep down inside, the nonverbal cues in their facial expression, the tone of their voice, their posture, the way they carry themselves, the, the intonation, or what they call mm -hmm. vocal prosody, the up and down, the prosody of it versus, hello, how are you doing? What's going on? That's the impact of dissociation and trauma. A facial expression with lots of smiles and up and down is a healthy, regulated nervous system. But if I'm in at the effect of trauma and I've disassociated from my nervous, because of my nervous system, I've left my body, then I will have no facial expression. My tone of voice will be like, eh. Mm -hmm. and 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 you can feel that in someone so we deep down know these cues these cues of safety within our nervous system we sense that because we're social creatures i mean mm -hmm. dogs when you dogs meet one another they smell one another they sniff they look they try to see the posture tells the other person the the, the cues of safety deep down inside human beings were social animals because of at the hands of these attachment traumas from childhood, we then stop feeling safety within our bodies. And if we don't work towards addressing them, Hedia, what ends up happening is we start looking for safety outside of ourselves. We start attaching to groups, to people, 
to externals, whether mm-hmm. it's money, whether it's fame, whether it's women, mm-hmm. men, relationships. Mm-hmm. And it just works out that it never is enough. That partner never really can fill what's missing. That the, the, the money that they're making never really does work yeah. to solve it. Uh, and so here we are, a society that is deeply at the effect of our attachment traumas, and we don't even know it. How do we know that it's there? Well, it's going to show up with certain signs and symptoms. What to look for? Well, if you are feeling stuck, the word stuck mm-hmm. uh, is a paralyzing freeze response of your nervous system at the effect of trauma. The truth is, you know, what you deep down, you are a soul that knows who they are and what they would love out of life. But if Mm -hmm. you have trauma and you've dissociated from your body because of childhood wounding and it's just recently been triggered in a relationship or the pandemic or whatever, then now all of a sudden you're going to have the experience, Hedia, that I'm stuck. That's one of the first things. Whether it's relationship, whether it's your career, or mm-hmm. whether it's your health. And so your nervous system starts giving you these cues. And if we don't listen, we then attract these wake-up calls in the form of financial collapse, relational mm-hmm. collapse, health collapse, to help mm-hmm. wake us up to go find who we were before we lost ourselves at the hands of those mm-hmm. traumas. And so mm-hmm. I absolutely adore going upstream with people and not just dealing with physical problems, but going upstream and dealing with the emotional at the hands of those attachment traumas. So that's what I do now. I run a global community of cycle breakers who are not wanting to take blame or blame the, you know, become victim to their parents, but really take responsibility to healing what didn't start with them and thereby breaking the cycle for their children so that they don't have to grow up in broken families where their parents don't know how to attune to them. So that's Mm -hmm. really what I'm passionate about. And that impacts our health. Very much Absolutely. So. Well, thanks for sharing that. So how many times, so obviously you saw this over and over in your career um, as a chiropractor, that you saw all these people coming with all these physical signs and symptoms, that there's so much more behind that. And what you said, what you just said, feeling stuck. And some people might verbalize it, some people might not. But for those who are listening, I'm sure a lot of you can relate um, at some points in our life, we might have felt stuck. And there's so much behind that. There's so much behind that. And, um, and how often do you see that in your practice? I'm sure so much. And make you want oh, to it's do not, what you it, do. It's not, it's not how often. It's literally everybody. It's an experience mm-hmm. that we all share as humans. The question is, can I learn can I learn how to a become aware of where I'm stuck, where it is, mm-hmm. why it's happening, where can I locate it in my body, and through very powerful cognitive and somatic tools. It's not enough mm-hmm. to talk about it. It's mm-hmm. not enough to just go to a therapist every week and tell your problems. Talking is helpful, but we must address it at the brainstem level. In other words, we must go to the amygdala, we must go to the hippocampus, we must go to all of those centers where the the memories are stored, and we Mm -hmm. must practice the art of feeling and releasing them again and again. So everybody's stuck who reaches out. You wouldn't reach out unless you are stuck. Um, We just need some guidance to allow ourselves to feel those feelings and emotions, and it's terrifying. It's terrifying. We're stuck. The reason why we get stuck is trauma. And trauma it does, is not just capital T trauma. You could, you know, if you had the experience, I'm, you know, Persian, you're Persian. Persian, in our culture, intergenerational trauma is so insidious and common. I, every Persian that I know, I can see it in their faces and their bodies, right? If, um, like I can just see it. And what it looks like is if you had your reality invalidated growing up from parents who are so keen on, you know, using the children as an extension of their own ego. That's how you and I were raised. That's how Persians raise their children. Yes. It's got to yes. gotta look good. It's got to be mm-hmm. a certain way. The word tarot in and of itself yeah. implies yeah. 
intergenerational. Yeah. It's it's self abandonment. Yeah. It's I'm yeah. going to sacrifice myself. I want you, if you're listening, look up the word tarot. I don't know how you can spell it in English. T a r o f. I'm glad you brought that up. There is no equivalence for it in English, but it's there's so no true. equivalent. Like, it's yeah. funny, funny explaining it to uh, non Persians because there isn't a real translation. But the whole concept of it is, I must abandon my own needs and desires so that I can be polite and look good for the other person, which has all the right intentions. But the way that it's drilled to us, it teaches little children to self-abandon. So yeah. self-abandonment is inherent in our culture, and then mm -hmm. it kind of carries forth in parenting, in looking good in public, all mm -hmm. of those things. And so children are taught to invalidate their reality. So because, the par because it's a very narcissistic parenting style, it's mm -hmm. about the parent, children are to be seen, not heard. It's all about the parent and looking good for the parent. To hell with the to hell with the desires of the child being you know an artist. It's like that's not gonna. You, you should be doctor. Yeah. Why don't you become <laughs> doctor? Right. Yeah, you're um, you're either for for those who don't know, they don't know what we're talking about. Unless you're a Persian, you don't know. But you either have oh. to be doctor or engineer. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. we're not validated. Doctor, yeah. Doctor, engineer, <laughs> lawyer, or failure. Lawyer. Those are your. Those yeah. are your options: doctor, yeah. lawyer, engineer, or failure. You have those four options. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so, um, you know. And what others think? So the fear of judgment, right? Because you don't really oh, live for yourself; you live for others. Yeah. Well, that that's called. There's a word for that, and I want anybody who's listening to really take this in. It's called enmeshment trauma. Enmeshment means that. My emotional state, my well-being, my sense of self, is all defined externally. I, I, I can't be. I, if you're not okay with me, I'm not okay with me. Mm -hmm. And so, because and because that's a very protective mechanism in our nervous systems. Because the biggest we we, we die if we don't have social bonding and connection. So there is a value of social connection, but if left unexamined. Um, the the external, the social, uh, takes precedence over our own soul. So mm -hmm. we sacrifice ourselves. We leave ourselves in service of external validation and approval, because the, the judgment of somebody else that's negative about me means that I will abandon myself. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a we have that's you know not just my our culture, Hedia. It's everybody's. Most cultures, it's just really obvious with per like I just it's so clear with Persians because I I was raised in it right so, um, our journey to healing is all about finding those younger parts that we abandoned to be safe and belong to the tribe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the second half of life is all about healing those attachment wounds and unless we do we will forever be seeking validation externally. And when it doesn't come the way that we want, it impacts our psyche, our health, our well-being, all of our relationships. Because the fundamental relationship within me and my own body has been disconnected, and so ultimately, the root cause of the root cause is disconnection from self. And so the answer is only one. There's only one. Unless we're doing this one thing, everything else is a band-aid, which is. Reconnecting back to those younger parts, not just cognitively, but in my body, into connecting with little Nima, who thought that he was uh, not good enough unless he had these outcomes and these performative um, mm -hmm. external outcomes. And so, mm -hmm. to undo that, to unlearn mm -hmm. that, is a lifelong endeavor to mm -hmm. to return back to our authentic self. And healing is healing means to 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 go to become whole and complete. Within ourselves, mm -hmm. essentially, mm -hmm. and unless we're doing that, we're not fully healing. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you mentioned that Perry just joined us. I was having a uh, conversation with her on Monday, especially actually around this, and um, we talked about self-esteem and how our interactions and everything that has happened in our childhood, because they've always told us, you know, be a good girl or be a good boy or do this or do that, and the, the approval that you seek from your parents. Affects you long term and your confidence, your self esteem, everything in future, hundred uh, percent. So it all starts there. It yeah. all begins there. I mean, I yeah. want you to look at it this way: is that we're not 
you know, adults. We are little children in adult bodies. And as soon as we can really acknowledge that and we can tap into that little one inside of us again and again, moment to moment, that's when we start to change our nervous system. We start to add more neurons to our prefrontal cortex so that we can now self-regulate. Mm-hmm. And then we start to emotionally mature. And when we emotionally mature, our boundaries start to form of who we are and what's okay and what's not. And we're able to use our voice. And then we are able to speak up. And then without having to be defensive, we can just ask for what we desire. And then we feel worthy of receiving in abundance and feel worthy of of healing. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's all of our journey. So what you're saying takes a lot of awareness, right? I think it takes a lot of emotional intelligence and awareness to even seek help and then and then there's a lot of tools obviously so talk to us about some of the tools um that you've been using well the first part of my career was all about changing people's perceptions so Mm -hmm. if you have a negative thought about yourself switch it to a positive one right and i spent a lot of time teaching that and it's useful of course of course it's useful when you are in that state and you're thinking all of these thoughts, we start trying to unthink those thoughts and choose different thoughts. And the biggest shift for me of my entire career was only recently when I realized is that my state is not connected, is not created by my thoughts. My thoughts are actually created by the state of my nervous system. So Mm -hmm. I had it backwards for the whole time in my career I had it backwards. I thought if I can just change my thoughts, then my state would change. When I realized that there are various different states of my nervous system, if you're studying the polyvagal theory, which is what I highly recommend, it's going to be the future of healthcare, I believe. Um, Essentially, my state, whether I'm in sympathetic, which we've all heard, Mm -hmm. the fight or flight, Mm -hmm. part of the nervous system, which I'm activated, I'm hypervigilant. If I'm in that state, I'm going to have sympathetic, dominant, protective thoughts. Like this Mm -hmm. person's out to get me. Why does this always happen to me? Um, Everyone's trying to screw me over. I can't change those thoughts and ignore uh, by, by, by thinking alone. They must be addressed by my state. I must learn how to change my state. So that's sympathetic. Also, if the, if, the, if the stimulation is too much, like COVID, one bad news after another, uh-huh. and it's too much, too fast, too soon, my nervous system then goes into what's called the dorsal vagal shutdown. It's a freeze response. It's the deer in headlights. It's the shell shock where I mm-hmm. literally dissociate from my body because it's too painful to be in my body. So that's why when people say, wow, I don't remember just what happened or I just blacked out. I just heard such bad news and I blacked out. That's kind of, it's called tonic immobility. It's a, it's a, it's a defense mechanism, a mechanism of our nervous system to play dead so that maybe the predator that's out to get us will then leave us alone. Right? It's a, it's a, it's a protective, right? It's an adaptive form of state that our childlike state, our, 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 uh, as a child, we learn. Mm-hmm. You know, I just spoke with a client just uh, just yes, just today, and when she was a child, she was molested several times, right? And she says, I don't remember those experiences. But guess what happens to her when she is, uh, you know, having sexual relationships now in adulthood? All of a sudden, she'll get touched a certain way and then freeze. Or she'll be out on a date and they'll touch her, she'll freeze not knowing what's going on because she's dissociated from her body just like she did back when she was a child and all of a sudden date rape happens Mm. right because the person touching says oh there's no the person's not saying no Mm -hmm. i'm just Mm going to keep going and then after you're done you're like the 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 person wakes up and they're like what the hell just happened i think i just got raped and I, i would i would assume a lot this happens very commonly it's very sad but this all happens because of a misunderstanding and, and a lack of education of the nervous system and how it responds to stress. So the first part of my career was dedicated to teaching people how to change your thoughts to change your state. And I realized it wasn't until I, went, I got into a place after my last breakup where I couldn't think, right? I couldn't think. I couldn't 
I couldn't think. I, I was trying to think my way out of my stuckness, and it wasn't working. I was like, what the heck's going on? Like, I'm trying to use all the tools, the overview, the Demartini, all of the, the, the Byron Katie work. Maybe I can talk my way out of this, and it wasn't working. And then that was when I started learning about breath work. That was when I started learning about somatic experiencing and realizing that I was in a freeze response. And it's, <coughs> and I, <coughs> excuse me, you can't talk your way out of a thinking, you can't think your way out of a feeling problem. So I realized that I was using personal development to not have to feel. Mm -hmm. And that was when my training really began, my Jedi training into getting into my body into embodiment, into feeling, facing, feeling, mm -hmm. releasing and surrendering those. So what tips and tools you ask? I mean, I wouldn't suggest going into those traumas alone, highly. Like now that I'm, I'm, I'm in my first of three years in training of becoming a somatic experiencing practitioner, I retired from chiropractic. Now I teach people how to heal trauma from the body-based level. And so the best place to begin is to really just start to get into sensation, start to put on um, essential oils and to start to smell. If you're feeling like you're dissociated constantly, it's really about getting yourself back into your body, turning on music and feeling um, uh, tools. What tools do we have is attend a breathwork class, mm -hmm. attend a breathwork. Mm -hmm. The best place to begin is just attending a breathwork um, uh, experience and to practice feeling and to experience yourself dissociating, noticing it, bringing yourself back into your body. And so the, the best tool that I, that, that I would give is, is just the practice of, it's a neural practice of just sitting and feeling what's happening in your body, the sensations, mm -hmm. the smells, mm -hmm. the, um, the story, the, then the images and the stories that you're making up and just becoming practicing as a silent observer of all of that. Sometimes, I, and a lot of times that sounds like meditation, but when you've gone into dissociation trauma, then meditation isn't actually the best thing for you. Um, I was actually going to ask that, I was going to ask about meditation. Is meditation helpful? Yeah. And the notion of like mindfulness, what you're saying is being mindful, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But mindful. it takes practice. practice. Yeah. But the thing is, is that if your state is in dorsal shutdown, when your mind is out of your body, like you're literally dissociated from your body, mindfulness is not possible. So it's really about learning the language of our nervous system. The best tools, there's no quick fix, is to become hungry to learn the language of my nervous system, your nervous system, and to understand and feel into going, ah, there I am in sympathetic. Ah, there I am in dorsal. And having a plan, a map, and, an, a, and a plan to train your nervous system. This is what we train in, our, in all of our, our, um, in our trainings, in our live events, in my programs, is to be able to self-assess first. Mm -hmm. And the first step is to stop judging yourself to the, for the state that you're in. Because we mm -hmm. have this happy, illusionary fantasy of happiness and, and, and success all the time. So if I'm not feeling happy and successful, I'm going to check out and invalidate myself. So the, the, the best thing that I do is I teach the, the four permissions. It's okay to feel sad. It's safe to feel sad. I'm allowed to feel sad, and I have permission to feel sad. And so it's the exercise of noticing and allowing whatever is there. I, I allow. I have permission to feel. And to give permission for that, that is a revolutionary act to a person, to a soul who's conditioned himself or herself to abandon themselves every time they have an emotion. Mm -hmm. I realized it's not our emotions that are the problem, it's our reactions to our emotions. That's the real problem, because if I can just embrace whatever emotion is there, then I don't have to resist it. And whatever I resist in myself persists, and whatever energies I fight, I feed. Mm -hmm. And so... It's a spiritual journey, Hedia, and there's no quick fix. It's just the best tip I can get give, give you is to find yourself a guide who can guide you back into being able to feel, to feel safer, to feel in your body, to create safety within your body. Because when you do that, you can create safety in your body. You heal. Mm-hmm.
if you use if you need somebody else to do that for you, mm -hmm. you're constantly dependent on that other person. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking for a hero to save you, find a guide to help you feel that relationship within the self so that you can create safety within the self. Wow. Well, what you're saying is so powerful. I'm learning so much. Um, thank you. And, you know, one of the reasons we wanted to put on this wellness series, uh, well, first of all, beginning of summer, and also the COVID restrictions are lifting off and we've all, we're all coming out of, <laughs> coming out of COVID. <laughs> so lockdown. a lot of us are, you know, yeah, coming out of like lockdown and uh, learning life again, really, you know, because we're used to you know, isolation and now uh, <coughs> adopting yeah. to the new life again. And a lot of what we've been hearing is uh, people struggling and mental health has been on the rise. Oh, so yeah. that's why we want to talk to everyone from different perspective of health and wellness, whether it's mental health or, you know, other aspects of our health. And, and any tools, um, anything that we can learn about. And some of the things you said, sometimes we feeling stuck. You know, there's a lot more behind that that we need to learn. And there's a lot of tools that we can use. And, um, you know, you already shared some, some great tools with us. Um, tell us about some of the programs you're doing, maybe where people, yeah. people can find more. more. Well, the be people, I, the DMs that, that I get are all pretty much the same. There's a relational issue, a breakdown in a relational issue. Mm -hmm. Should I stay or should I go? By the way, uh, if you're, I have a, I have a uh, training actually tonight uh, at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, it's a kind of a master class. I go through the transitions we need to go through in order to know, should I stay or should I go out of this relationship? How to actually go all in, connect, or finally part ways in, in, you know, in inspiring ways. Instead how many of people kind of broke up after breaking. this year? How, how often? How yeah. Many, a lot, right? Yeah. This was a make or break. This is a make or break yeah. time, right? It's like COVID hit and it's not like COVID was the problem. COVID exposed what we could no longer hide from. And the truth of the matter is most of us were living unconscious, disconnected lives. COVID just amplified it and said, it's time to take a look and it's time to take some action. And so... Either if you learn the skills to master your own um, nervous system and be able to respond rather than react, then COVID has been amazing for you. If you haven't learned how to do that, then COVID has just unraveled you. And yeah. so it's, it, it, it all depends on mm -hmm. our resilience and ability to be within our bodies and be responsive rather than reactive. Because it was tough for me. I remember COVID was like, oh, geez, okay, got married, mm -hmm. had a kid. And during all COVID? Of a sudden, during COVID, no. I got married, oh, had a kid. During oh, COVID, I got married and had a child. He's oh, 10 what? months old. He is, his, his first birthday is in September. So September 21st of 2020, he born in COVID time, mm -hmm. got married, I had a kid, and I had to cancel six live events internationally, New Zealand, Europe. Vancouver, I was like, oh shit, what the hell? And I could feel my body go into fight or flight and go into freeze response. And I was like, wow, thank God I learned these tools a um, mm -hmm. long time ago so that I could prepare myself so that I can be in my body and act from my own inspired intuition. Because mm -hmm. that's really what's going to get us through this unknown called life is, am I connected to myself and can I, can I respond from my inspired intuition versus react out of fear? And most people, if you saw the toilet paper stuff and hoarding and, <laughs> yeah. and, and relational breakdowns, mm -hmm. everybody is reacting from their fears that were here long before COVID versus the clients that we worked with, their relationships got better. They became healthier and they... Mm -hmm. totally capitalized because during crisis crisis in the word in in a chinese character crisis is mixed with two different characters danger and opportunity yeah. so danger we all yeah. went through the danger we all felt mm -hmm. it we all mm -hmm. some are still in it right they're feeling yeah. it but it was also an opportunity so i was like oh shit i have to cancel all these live events oh I just transformed them into creating two live events, mm -hmm. my breathwork and badassery. So I took mm -hmm. my three-day live event and I turned it into two smaller 
online mm-hmm. events. And it has just completely given access to people all over the world to this work who wouldn't be able to afford yeah, no travel to, needed. to the line events, no travel needed, yeah. connecting from Zoom. I've mm-hmm. now completely gone online, haven't done a live event. I missed them. I don't have to do them. I look forward to doing them again when mm-hmm. things open up and mm-hmm. probably next year we'll get back to doing that. But mm-hmm. I, I, I got to pivot and my and everything just expanded in my life. Uh, my marriage has gotten even better through COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my, me, me as a parent, I just love who I'm becoming as a mm-hmm. result of it. So um, it's, it's make or break depending on how safe I feel in my body. And when I don't feel safe, how quick can I recover back into that safety and not needing an outside source to create that for me? That's the, those are the real questions we want to ask. And if I could suggest the two skills that you're going to mm-hmm. want to invest in mastering and learning, these are the, the two skills in 2021 post-COVID world you're going to want to learn, which I, by the way, I said this back in 2020 before COVID hit, it was like, whoa, prediction came true, was yes. your ability to take a trigger that you're confronted by, by somebody else outside of you, Mm -hmm. and turn that trigger into a deeper Mm self-love instead of self-abandonment. Because when Mm -hmm. we get triggered, we abandon Mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. We think, I'm not worthy. Can you turn that that self-abandonment into deeper self-love? And number two, can I take conflicts, which happen with two souls who are in, in, in relation to one another? My wife and I have conflict. Uh, my team and I have conflict. I have conflict with people in my, mm-hmm. you know, clients, whatever. Can I take, do I have, have I cultivated the skill to take that conflict that mm-hmm. I have with you, for example, let's say you and I get into a conflict. Can I use that conflict to create a deeper, more intimate relationship with you rather than pull away from you? That's mm-hmm. a skill. It is. That we yeah, it learn. is. Yeah, definitely. And I actually talked about this um, earlier this week. Um, I think, again, culturally, we've been taught to not have disagreements, <laughs> right? To stuff it so, down, to pretend. Yes, yes, but you, yeah, you can have healthy disagreements. You can have oh, your yeah. own points. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're arguing. <laughs> it doesn't, it, no, it doesn't. And, and if you are arguing, it doesn't mean you can't use that moment to create vulnerability and understanding and have deeper yeah. connection as a result. Absolutely. So yeah. we do relationships the way relationships were done to us. We parent our children the way we were parented. We parent ourselves the way we were parented. And mm-hmm. often it was from unconscious parents who were using us for their own egoic needs. So mm-hmm. what happens is we turn into people who abandon ourselves for, for our own egoic needs. And so healing trauma is all about reu- reunion with those younger parts of us that we abandoned as a mm-hmm. result of, of, mm-hmm. of, of not feeling seen growing up from parents who couldn't see themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, um, so I, I love this conversation and, you know, there's so much power to everything you're doing. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, I want to leave everyone with a takeaway. You already, you know, uh, reviewed so much with us. Uh, so the last two that you just men- mentioned, say them again as a takeaway. The first skill to, ma- to, to master, if you can, and find guidance, get a mentor, I mean, we can't, uh, Peter Levine, my mentor says, you can't do it alone and no one can do it for you, Mm -hmm. right? This is not somebody, this is not something we can do alone because we're social beings. Find a container, a -hmm. community where you can learn how to master the art of taking a trigger and turning it into deeper self-love. Yeah. And skill number two, a conflict that's going to happen between partners, between business partners, between lovers, between parent-child relationships, between siblings that are going to happen. And instead of the conflict tearing you apart, I mean, what happened during conflict growing up? Well, shit was thrown around. Uh, There was loud noises and yelling and screaming, and there was no training, no uh, modeling of repair Mm -hmm. from these misattunements Mm -hmm. and conflicts. So Mm -hmm. now we have these fucked up relationships with conflict itself. Mm -hmm. So it causes me to put on a mask and hide my truth in front of you. And then now you and I don't have a real authentic, intimate relationship because I'm hiding myself because I don't want to have conflict because I don't want, I'm afraid of your rejection and your judgment. And so consider the possibility that most of our life is 
bunch of bullshit. And, and that's what a lot of our clients, when they, when they come in and they start to do the work, they're like, I don't really know who I am anymore. I don't, I've been putting on this mask. I've been spending my life in pleasing all these people that I, I don't know who I am anymore. I'm just like, all right, it's time to get to know the real you. And so what, what we do is we train them in how to master the art of taking the trigger and turning it into deep self, deeper self love instead of self abandonment. And number two, the, the, the art of conflicting and mm -hmm. being deeper as a result of conflict mm -hmm. rather than falling apart. If you yeah. can master those two skills, mm -hmm. the world is your oyster. I because love now it. you have, because now when you do, you have self regulation. You're not as mm -hmm. needy of other people. You can have bad news come in and things not go your way. And notice my, I notice myself wanting to abandon myself and saying, oh, you're a failure. You're a piece of shit. You're a failure. You did it again. You, you, you suck. One of my clients earlier on a call is like, there, I, I just realized I just called, I just said this to myself, you suck. Right? I asked her after her first call when we're healing all of these attachment traumas, I said, what was your greatest takeaway? Expecting to her, for her to say, wow, I didn't realize how important, because we were working on her mission statement and the language she chooses to create her world. I was expecting her to say, I didn't realize how important my language was to create my world. That's what I was hoping to hear. Mm -hmm. But instead, she goes, wow, I just heard myself say, you suck. I'm like, that's the trauma speaking. That's mm -hmm. the self-abandonment. Mm -hmm. That's it's so insidious. Mm -hmm. And just by me telling you, you'll be like, it's true. But tomorrow or tonight, you'll go back to it. So it's a conditioned response. We must be committed to learning how to undo. And no one can do it for us. Unfortunately, nobody can do it for us. So those are the two skills you are wise to get to, to really find a community and a guide to help you master. When you do, your 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 whole life changes, Hedia. Your your first of all, the triggers and the emotions that we've been repressing, they cause health issues. So your health will your your yeah. health will improve. Mm -hmm. Your energy levels will improve. Your mm -hmm. sleep will improve. You can have anxiety come up, but then you'll be like, ah, oh, I know what to do because you've learned to self-regulate. Mm -hmm. When you do that you then feel safer in the realm of relationships. You can speak your mind and know that conflict will happen and that's okay for conflict to happen because you trust the process of repairing because you've learned the skill. So automatically self-trust is built and the whole holy grail of this entire journey is self-trust because the opposite of anxiety is self-trust. The opposite of self-trust is anxiety. So to heal anxiety, all you got to do is build self-trust. I love it. Beautifully said. So I hope everybody are listening this over and over. It starts from you, within you. And we already talked about so many great tools. And uh, Nima, where would people find out more about uh, you and what you do? <coughs> well, if you're watching this on Instagram, it's pretty simple to find. Uh, yes. If you have a question, my suggestion is where to begin is to um, find out what your attachment style is. I have a mm -hmm. quiz that I have. If you DM me, I'll send you a link for the quiz. Ask you some questions of how you've been showing up in relationships. And then once you know what your attachment style is, find a guide and a mentor and a community that's going to help you move from insecure attachment to secure attachment. I also have a Facebook community called Trigger Proof where I teach you how I, I basically do trainings and ask quest, answer questions. So those are the best place. And on Clubhouse, which you met me at, I do a call every week with Dr. Russell on Fridays at 1 p.m. Pacific. We have our Manxiety show in the Brain Care Club. So mm -hmm. I'm not that difficult to track down. I also have a YouTube channel, website. And so um, mm -hmm. essentially the best places to begin is breathwork and the overview experience. Those are my trainings where I kind of start teaching you these tools. Well, thank you for this and for people that are who have missed this. This is going to be on our IGTV as well. Um, we're also uh, transcribing all the sessions we're having throughout the summer. And we will have a recap summary of everyone that we have talked with over the summer. So be sure to subscribe to our newsletter to provide to to receive a summary of everything. And uh, thank you, Nima. It was my absolute pleasure. Thanks for accepting my invitation to speak with I me. Hope to bump, I hope to bump into you at a cello cab. will be up in North Van. <laughs> in no, I'm sure we will. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I'm looking, you know, it's, it's a small community. Yeah. I'm right, sure you, right, right. Yes. 
Yeah, looking forward totally. to meeting you actually and um, more collaborations hopefully. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye-bye. All right. Have a wonderful day. Bye.